Hello everyone and this is an introduction to the pyro solver in Houdini 18 or more specifically the SOP level pyro solver okay because well essentially that's just a, a DOP level network that's been wrapped up and put in SOP level but that's the one that we will be covering okay so we won't go into DOPs okay so the idea is uh, that there are three primary topics that I'll be covering and then within those topics there will be like subtopics okay so uh, what we are covering is uh, the first topic is the basic setup so this will cover the basic smoke simulation and then uh, the second topic is how to set up a pyro simulation and also how to set up an explosion and then lastly we'll take a look at moving objects and custom velocities okay so each one of these will have more you know sort of subtopics the basic setup will cover a fair few things. So we'll start off with like the absolute basics of how to set up a smoke simulation. Then I want to cover all the basic uh, pyro solver parameters and then uh, the parameters for shaping the smoke. And then lastly, we'll take a look at how to modify the density attribute so we can animate emission and also how to do a collision setup. Okay. Now I'm not sure if all of this will be part of one video. Uh, it depends on the length like if the video is going to be too long I'll probably break this up into like four smaller videos and upload them on like a daily basis so it just you know easier to uh, easier to understand rather than going through like one long 50 minute video okay so uh, let's get started okay now this isn't very complicated okay like the basic setup is quite simple okay uh, I'll just create a sphere and I'll move it up slightly so I'll keep it around here and all right so the way it works now is fairly simple okay uh, you generate a set of points and you generate two attributes on it so primarily you create the density attribute and a temperature attribute and then there is a simple node which will convert those attributes into volumes and then you feed that into the pyro solver like it's it's essentially that so what you're dealing with at base level is not uh, you're not dealing with volumes at all you're just dealing with point attributes okay which makes it easier to manipulate them so uh, I'll just change this into a polygon I'll give it some points or increase the frequency and then the way it works is you can take something called as a pyro source now the pyro source is primarily like a combination of a scatter node and a points from volume node okay so what you do is when you connect it to the first input uh, by default it says keep input so what what happens is like as many number of points it has it just uses those points and then uh, you want to initialize this to whatever so we'll say the source is smoke and then if you say source smoke it will just create two it will just create two attributes for you so it will create density and it will create temperature and it will give it values okay like it's pretty much that like if i change this to source fuel then it adds in uh, an additional fuel value as well. Okay, so you can kind of work that way. So we just, we don't want the fuel right now. So we'll get rid of that. So we want the density and the temperature. And then uh, if I don't change anything, like if I don't modify anything in that, I can just take something called as a volume rasterize attribute. And you'll notice that this has two attributes called density and temperature. Okay, it also generates a P scale. Uh, but we don't need that right now. Okay, and then all you have to do is just connect this to the volume rasterize and Give it the names of the attributes that it needs to convert into volume. Okay, so just type in density and Temperature and there you go. It will generate a volume. You can just decide the particle scale how much you want and Now all we have to do is take a pyro solver and you're pretty much done. So if I just take pick up a pyro solver and connect it if you press play you'll get smoke now the default dissipation like it dies off too quickly that's mainly because uh, it dissipates too fast okay so that's the only thing that we'll modify before we go into anything else so if you come to the solving and you'll find something called shape and you have dissipation at 0.5 so we'll just get that down to like 0.1 or 0.17 and now if you press play you'll get smoke 
So I'll just turn that off and there you go. So pretty simple. Now uh, you have different things that you can do in the pyro solver. So either we can, it can just use the input points or uh, you can say volume scatter. So volume scatter is just going to fill up the whole thing with uh, points. So you'll get more smoke essentially. Like if I press play now, so you'll get a lot more smoke. We can also try to increase like the particle scale. Yeah, there you go. And then, or we can also set it to scatter. Okay, so you can have it like, you know, it'll just scatter points. So we can just define particle separation. That will define how much, you know, it should scatter. And then if you press play on this, you'll pretty much get the same result. Now, the thing to remember is that the pyro source is just there to make your life easier. But you can do this by just standard point scattering and creating attributes as well. Okay, which basically means that if I take a simple scatter node, okay, and I'll connect this to scatter, and then I can take a wrangle, and I can create these attributes manually. So I can take f at density is equal to one, and then f at temperature is equal to one. And if I plug this into the volume rasterize, and you'll effectively get the same result. Okay, so all I, all you need to do is just lower the particle scale, because it doesn't have a p scale value. Okay, so we'll just modify that. And you'll get the exact same result. Or if I pick up uh, uh, points from volume, you will again get the same result. So if I just take this and I plug this in, okay, so you've, you've generated some points in there, I'll probably do a jitter scale. And then if I plug this over here, you're going to get the exact same thing. So the point is that uh, the pyro source is just there because all of this stuff is inbuilt and it makes your life simpler. But uh, if you want to manually create the, these set of nodes, like just a point node and a wrangle node, you can get the same result okay, as long as you create the right attributes. Okay, now once you've created this much, let's say if you want to just sort of modify the uh, emission values, okay, like maybe uh, this is too uniform. So you want to give it a little bit of noise. So what you can do is you can take an attribute noise, okay, and we can modify this. So what I can do is I can come in here, I'll add an attribute noise in the middle. And we want to keep this to we want to keep this to 1d. And we want to modify, let's say we modify density, and uh, remap the noise and make sure that this is on multiplicative. Okay, because it's by default, it's just adding to it. So that won't have too much of an effect. So make sure you keep this to multiplicative and see you can see it sort of, you know, adjusted. But if we want, we can really sort of eat up into it. And if I come to the pyro solver, see, there you go. Here, it's sort of the reason why you're not seeing it very clearly and in the volume rasterize is because it's showing you density and temperature and we are only modifying density right now. So if I just take this and uh, yeah, so when you come to the pyro solver here, it only shows you the, the density because the temperature is just for moving the smoke and we can just adjust this. Yeah. And so now if you play it, you know, you'll get slightly non-uniform smoke. Now, along with this, what you also want to do is uh, usually you want to switch on animated so that it moves. So the smoke will kind of vary. And so that will give you, you know, slightly more interesting looking smoke. Now, along with this, if you also modify the temperature, so what temperature does is the more temperature you have, the faster the smoke rises. So you have to remember something like you do need the temperature. The temperature is very important. Okay, If I don't have the temperature, if I keep the temperature to say zero, and if I go back to the solver, nothing happens. Okay, so if, the, if there is no temperature, you are not going to get an emission. Okay, so temperature is very important. Okay, so density defines like how much smoke you have and temperature decides how fast it rises. So we have to come back here and I'll give it one. And so now I have like density and temperature and this will give you a slightly more, see, 
So places where it finds higher temperature, the smoke suddenly sort of shoots up. And then places where there's low temperature, it's not, you know, rising up as much. And you can also modify them separately. So if I just remove the density from here, and if I, let's say control C, control V, I'll make a second one. And this one will just be temperature. And let's do one thing. Let's let this go faster and it'll be smaller in size. And let's also give it a bit of an offset. Okay, so if we play this, see, so now you're getting, yeah, okay. You're getting some really interesting smoke. Okay, and if we want to visualize this slightly better in the viewport, I can just take a light and we'll set this to distant and just rotate it a little bit. Yeah, so that we can see, you know, it looks a little better. Yeah, it's also because some of our values are going into negative, which is generally not a smart idea. So the negative density values were the things that were causing problems. But what I can also try is I can come into the attribute noise and let's take the temperature. Okay, and let's shoot this up to, let's try 10 and see what we get. See, so now because the temperature is higher, the smoke tends to rise more. Let's do plus 10 to minus 10. Yeah, see, so now it sort of breaks up more. And let's also adjust the element scale. So without doing, you know, too much, just by using like an attribute noise for density and temperature, you can start getting, you know, relatively interesting results. And then changing the shape is fairly simple. So if let's say if I take like a font, and I'll just, you know, pick up some text or something. And let's make it slightly bigger. And what I can do is I'll just give it, give it like a poly extrude. And make sure you turn on output back. Okay, because you want to scatter points on it or do points from volume, you want to make sure that it's a solid. And then just bring it in and that's it like the rest of it just automatically takes care of itself and there you go okay and one final thing is if you don't want to see the bounding box in the viewport and this was something that i didn't know is you, you want to change the viewing type from smooth wire shaded to smooth shaded okay, because i had a i was having a problem with this one drink like how do I get rid of the bounding box? Like I didn't want to see it in the viewport, but there you go. Okay. All right, so given that this video was about 15 to 16 minutes or might be slightly shorter, uh, I think it will be a smart idea to, you know, break these up into separate uh, videos, okay? Because otherwise it's going to end up being like, I think like a 50 minute video, which is not a smart idea. Okay, so having smaller videos, it will be a little easier to consume. Uh, so yeah, so with this video, we've seen the absolute basics of setting up a smoke simulation. Okay, so setting up your uh, your pyro source or points from volume, then generating the attributes. Uh, as I said, you don't need this. Like this, I was just doing it to show you, but you can just use the pyro source. Like that's perfectly fine. You don't need to go through this method. Okay. Uh, and then using the attribute noise, for modifying the density and temperature so you can get a more varied smoke emission so that's essentially it okay now the next video we will start looking at uh, the parameters in the pyro solver so we're going to start off with the simulation tab and we'll take a look at you know all of these guys here and then we'll move on to the shape tab so the flames tab comes into play when we do the pyro setup. So we haven't gone to the, the pyro setup will come, you know, in lesson two, this is like one A. <laughs> okay, so when we get to lesson two, that will be the pyro setup, then we'll talk about flames. So right now, we're just going to take a look at simulation and shape. Okay, so next video, we'll start taking a look at the pyro solver parameters.